Hi, here we are on Treaty 6 territory again, uh, and the traditional homeland of the Métis. Uh, and today is the, the third uh, video uh, about the toy theater. Uh, well, not about, but uh, well, yeah, about toy theater. Today, we're going to explore uh, making puppets. And uh, also a little bit about character development, backstories, things like that. Um, so let's get going. Thanks. There is bears. So again, I uh, wanted some reality, so I just found free photos on the internet and cut them out, traced them, and then glued them to again just some old uh, file folders. But you know, cardstock, any cardstock you have to give them a bit of um, strength. So we've got three bears. I looked on the internet to make sure that pandas are indeed bears. So we have three bears. And so again, I traced them out onto some cardstock, glued the pictures on. And now what I'm gonna do again is I'm just gonna put the bamboo skewers on. Because what I'm gonna be doing, so with these ones, my plan is to work from above. So I'm gonna stick them on um, lengthwise onto the skewers and then I'm going to need some more glue and, um, and work from the top. You could put them to the side of the puppet if you want to work from the side and um, I think I won't do that with the next one but it's definitely a possibility. That would make um, whatever you think your storyline is going to need or however your your theater works. All right. So I am. No, I might have put too much glue. Oh, well, yeah, I'm going to put this guy like that. And then I've got ta -da, one bear. Very. He's not frightening. He's just talking. That, that's a talking bear. That's what they look like. All right. And then these two guys, they're just, they just, they're going to work together. Um, of course, I could have made them individual, but um, I'm going to just use them as, as two sitting bears, uh, mostly because I only have two hands and I have like three, four characters in the story. So I'm hoping that uh, I have enough hands to make it all work. So here we go. Oh, wait, that's all. Need another skewer. Um, I think I'm going to stick it to this guy. And uh, yeah, my other bear, this cardboard, cardstock seems to be strong enough. So I'll just leave it, just glue it to one pan, one bear, one panda bear. Like I said, I checked on the internet, panda is a bear. All right, here we go. Easy peasy. That's why I use hot glue. It, uh, it sticks quickly and, it, and it's really strong. Um, the tape, if you don't, like I said, if you don't want hot glue, tape is probably your best bet here. It's going to be strong enough and hold for long enough. So here we go. I've got my three bears ready to go. So there we go. Bears are complete. And now our next and final character. You may have figured it out. So I have, um, so what I did was again, because I, I'm not really good with drawing faces and, um, I'm kind of picky and I wanted, uh, I wanted my character to look like a person. So I went on uh, Unsplash and I found um, a number of photos of the same young woman. And so in different plate, different um, positions. And I took those photos and I cut them out. And then again, on a piece of cardstock, I traced the head, the photo that I had. And then I just built, drew a body attached to that um, outline of the head so that we've got the outline of our of our girl our red riding hood and uh you know so i've also got some fabric just scraps of fabric that uh, live in my house now i can concentrate on the roundy part um you know color or glue with construction paper or whatever you want there we go now i when I did these uh, before, when I was preparing them, I was using Mod Podge. 
uh, which is a decoupage kind of uh, glue and but hot glue works just as well so here we go and now her dress is on I'm gonna put her face on You know, if you wanted to get real fancy, obviously you could use yarn for hair or anything like that. So here we go. Now she's got a face and a dress and we'll put the, we'll put her, her red cape on her after. So we've got a red cape on this one. Now I am going to be working with this, these puppets in a way that they're just going to be from this one side. So Laura's puppets were all sort of one-sided. I'm going to show you an easy way to make a two-sided puppet. Actually, you don't even have to do it this way, uh, but let's go through this what method. I folded a piece of uh, light cardboard in half, and then I drew a figure on one side, and when I cut it out, I have my two pieces, one for each side. Um, you could just put a stick uh, on one and then just paint the other side, but this way the stick kind of disappears really nicely. So I've got my bamboo stick and I'm going to tape it on and I'm going to get some glue and I'm going to glue it all around so it's nice and tight. Cool. And uh, yeah, I'm going to put some tape around the edges so that it uh, uh, the two pieces hold together until the uh, glue actually dries. And that's good. And, uh, and I'll show you what it looks like when I did both sides. So now I have a two-sided puppet. One side's got a happy face and one side's got a sad face. Cool, eh? And you'll notice that piece of foam sitting beside it. It's got a stick sticking out of it. You can pretty much put a stick on anything and make it into a puppet. Uh, I'll probably put a face or something on that piece of foam. It kind of moves interestingly. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, make that uh, little car part of my puppet show too. So sticks just give you a little bit of distance from the object so that when you move it around, it kind of looks like it's moving all by itself. Yep, and there's uh, my puppets for my show. This is my little lobster, and I think we'll call him Larry. Now, do you think that Larry could make friends with a butterfly? And maybe we'll call the butterfly Pat. So we have Larry and Pat, and they're going to meet, I suppose. Now, if you look at these little pieces, you'll notice that they're quite different. But that also means that they can have different personalities. Because I know that all of my friends have, are very different in their personalities. So some of my friends love to dance and sing and talk really loud and go outside and run really fast. And some of my friends, they like to talk really quiet and think for a long time before saying anything. And they like to go for slow walks and listen to the sound of the birds and read lots of books. So we have different personalities and we need all of them in the world. And I thought that this little lobster has a lot of personality and you can see that he could be very agitated by a lot of things. He could, he could be really really active about a lot of things. And I think that our butterfly is going to be very relaxed. Now, 
It can be the other way around. Maybe the butterfly is very, very nervous and doesn't know what she should do or what they should do. And maybe our little lobster is quiet and shy and doesn't really know who they should be in the world and where they belong and don't know if they should be under the water or crawling across the sand. So I think that it's really important when we're learning about our characters to not just make everybody the same with the same voice. So this one could have a really fast and maybe a little bit nervous voice and this one could have a nice, slow, calm voice, take a little bit of time to come up with some answers. And I think that they would be really good together. Now you can think about all sorts of different creatures. Maybe you've made some little people. Maybe you've made some little aliens. I always like to take a look at my character and before I put them in any situations, I like to think about who they really are. So when I think about my little lobster, I wonder, hmm, I wonder how old that lobster is. Maybe, maybe they're five. And maybe in their life, that's a long, long time. Maybe they're just a child and they're just learning about, you know, what they need to know in the world. Maybe they go to school. Maybe they have a lot of friends. When I think about the other character that I'm thinking about today, I think, I wonder if that butterfly has been on really long adventures because sometimes, sometimes they fly across the world and migrate. So there's all kinds of really cool things that we can think about. And if a butterfly has flown all across the world, maybe they have some really interesting stories to tell about the places they've been. Maybe they're scared of certain things because of adventures they've had. Maybe they're really fast and really strong because they've had all of those adventures. Sometimes I like to ask the characters some questions. And I wonder, if you could do anything, what would you do? And a lobster would have a different answer than a butterfly would. So maybe the lobster would like to climb to the top of a high, high tower and get a look at the world all around. And maybe if I asked the butterfly, maybe the butterfly's sort of dream would be to go for a swim. I don't think butterflies can swim. I don't think they can go underwater. I know they can get wet in the rain and they're okay. I might want to know what their favorite food is. And do you think a butterfly might like mm, leaves or vegetables, maybe pollen? Do you think a butterfly would like to eat pizza? So there's all kinds of questions we can ask. I can ask my little lobster, hmm, let's see, what's your favorite color? And because the lobster lives in the ocean, maybe their favorite color is blue. But maybe they really like looking at all of those colorful fish and their favorite color is yellow or orange or red. So there's all kinds of things that we can learn about our characters before we put them into a story. I hope you have fun learning more about your characters, and I'll see you again for another bit later. Well, that's all for today. I hope you're, hope you're having a great time doing this. Don't forget, uh, if this is the first video you've seen, there are two others in the series that should also be posted. And uh, so you can, you know, play catch up. Um, that'd be great. So tomorrow, we're going to uh, talk about uh, story development, you know, how to write a story, what are the things that should go into a story, that sort of thing. And uh, yeah, should be good. We'll see you then. Thanks so much for watching.